My name is Alex. I'm going to be going over a nuclear medicine gastrodentine study today. So with this study, we're looking at the patient's stomach and how they digest food or liquid per se. Uh, so for this study, we would look at like patients that are having trouble with nausea, vomiting, gastroesophageal reflux, hiatal hernia, or if they've had any um, surgery to their stomach that's kind of impairing how they digest things. So that would be something that I would talk about with getting a patient history is I want to know all these certain things if they've had surgery on their stomach, diagnosed for sure with reflux or with a hernia because that can affect our test but also helps the radiologist when taking the pictures. So with this test, it's kind of variable. There's a few different ways that it can be done. It can be done in a liquid phase, a solid phase, or a dual phase. The liquid phase would actually have the patient drink a radioactive tracer so then we can take pictures. The solid phase would actually have the patient eat a radioactive tracer so then we can take pictures. Or the dual phase would be a combination of both. The most commonly used one today is the solid phase, and that's usually done with either a standard meal or just a hard-boiled radioactive egg. The standard meal is with, uh, you would order your dose in a syringe from a nuclear pharmacy, prepare yourself with egg whites, cook the egg whites, and usually two pieces of toast, and give them a cup of water to, to eat and drink with the standard. Um, with the radioactive egg, you actually order that from the pharmacy, they inject the dose in the egg, and then you get it prepared from that, and then give it to the patient there. With a standard meal, usually it's about 10 minutes you give the patient to eat all of that and then start imaging. With the radioactive aid, it's about five minutes and you instruct them with radiation safety, have them glove up, eat over a kind of a table or tray that we have and make sure that they get as much of that dose as possible so we can get the images that we need. Um, with this uh, study, it's important that the patient not have anything to eat for at least four hours so then we can really see how their stomach is working just on its own without any other interference from anything else. Because what our pictures are actually going to be taking a picture of is that radioactivity from that, that egg or from the egg that we give the patient and then we want to see how that's moving and we don't want it interfered with anything else. So with that being said, when we get over to taking pictures, you can either have the patient lie on the camera and take pictures that way or you can have the patient stand in between the detector heads and have them face a certain detector and take pictures that way. So with the patient laying down, some patients aren't able to stand, so that would be one reason why you would do that. Another reason would be if the patient is known to have gastroesophageal reflux disease, you would want to have them laying on the camera because you want to see if that, if that tracer is actually refluxing up into their esophagus or not. So with that being said, if that were the case for doing a patient, you can actually take a movie type picture and this can be done for about up to the two hours, have the patient laying on the camera, or you can take one minute pictures every hour up to four hours. Um, or with having them stand up, if you do it that way, you could do have them take a one minute picture every hour up to four hours, or a one minute picture every 15 minutes or 30 minutes up to four hours, or as if, uh, or until you see that activity clear through their stomach. Depending on what you see and depending on where you work. So like I said, it's very variable. But then uh, I'm going to have Chris come over and uh, demonstrate how he would stand in between the camera heads here. I would instruct him to watch his steps, standing in between the camera. And I'll, there's these lines on the camera head itself. I want him to line his body up, the middle of his body, with that line and face me. So if you would do that, Chris. And you can keep your arms down by your side, or you can bring him over the camera head like this. So if Chris is kind of tall, this would be a case where I'd have to raise the, the camera heads up because the stomach's going to be about right here. So that's what I want to see, and what would help me with that is by using this computer right here. It's attached to our camera, and if I turn the camera on, it'll show us what we call a persistent scope, and that would be what the camera would be taking a picture of without actually starting the camera. So that's what where this black shows here, that's where that would be. And what I want to do while looking at this is move this, these camera detector heads up, and I want to put that where I see that activity from where that egg, I want to put that right in the middle of the screen. So then that way I can see where that egg empties out of his uh, stomach into the bowel, or if he has any reflux and goes up into the esophagus for a study. And that's the basis of, an, of a gastrodentine stomach.